In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the best magic items for the Artificer in your life as a dungeon master, but then also the ones that you're going to want to go after if you're playing an Artificer yourself in your home games. Let's get into it. Artificers are infamous for their abilities to dabble in the arcane or to create magic items and amazing feats of technology. As such, we are not going to be covering the magic items that they can make through their artificer infusions that they get as part of their base class. We're going to be looking at those magic items they don't have the ability to craft through their natural level progression. When you find something of value as we're going through this video today, make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel so that way you get notified when more of these D&D top 10s come out, as well as our DM guides and our live stream games that we have here on the channel. All right, let's get into that top 10 guide for artificers. Starting us off at number 10, we have the Wand of Magic Detection. Now, this particular magic item is going to be huge for your artificer because it's going to basically allow your artificer to prepare one of the most widely used spells in the game, one of the most widely used rituals in the game, without having to actually take up one of their prepared spells that they get on the adventuring day because they are a prep caster, not unlike a cleric, but they're also a half caster, so they don't get as many spells nor as many spell slots in general. So taking up one of those spells prepared to have detect magic can be a real hindrance on your artificer if they're the only intelligence caster in the party. That's why it can be important to have this wand of magic detection. Now, if you have a wizard in your party, it's kind of a moot point because your wizard can just cast detect magic as basically at will with a 10 minute ritual casting of the spell. But like I said, the wand of magic detection, really huge for our artificer here. And that's why it comes in at number 10. Coming in at number nine, we have the cloak of displacement. Now, this is a great magic item for any player character, let alone our artificer. But basically what it does is that it makes it so every attack roll against our artificer has disadvantage which is huge because that means you're probably not going to get hit as much now the only tricky part about this item is the simple fact that it can be deactivated whenever the artificer takes damage so you're going to want to go after those characters or those creatures that do aoe type effects against your artificer so that we can keep this thing up as much as possible and that's why because it has this use case it comes in on our list at number nine Coming in at number eight, we have the Broom of Flying. Now, the Broom of Flying is a great item for any character to have, regardless of the class, but it's really great for an artificer. This uncommon magic item, which really just should be a rare magic item, if you ask me, it gives your artificer 50 feet of flying speed. Now, this is because they're riding the broom, not your artificer magically all of a sudden has 50 feet of flying speed and then could sprint another 50 feet of flying speed. It's just the one base 50 feet of flying speed, but that's huge because then that means your artificer can be that shock troop if you want them to be it can be that raining hellfire from the sky with spells or other range attacks and it can also be a great support caster jumping around the battlefield buffing your party debuffing the enemy and then also healing whenever it needs to so that's why the broom of flying comes in at number eight on our list at number seven we have the ring of spell storing giving us an extra five levels worth of spells to store inside this ring now this is huge for the artificer now so think about this we're a half caster on par with the paladin when you think about it for a little bit you're getting an extra five levels of spells which is huge because you can then put shield or absorb elements or cure wounds or whatever the case may be into that ring of spell storing so that way you can have that extra little bit of defense or if there's other spells that you want to put in there you can go ahead and do that as well pair that with the spell storing item that we get with our abilities at level 11 as an artificer and you're talking 15 levels worth of spells that we can store for someone who's got a 20 intelligence well it's a huge buff benefit it's almost overpowered for the artificer to have this because you're talking how many castings of cure wounds or how many castings of shield that you all have on you so that way you can basically avoid getting hit at all costs and that is why this ring of spell storing comes in at number seven just outside the top five at number six we have the manual of Bob bodily health. Now, after spending 48 hours with this particular manual, reading it, of course, you will have the ability to raise your constitution score up by two points, as well as your max score raising from being a level 20 to 22, which is going to be a really big bonus for your artificer, especially when it comes to making those constitution saving throws on their concentration checks. A number of our spells as an artificer require concentration, so this is going to be a huge benefit for us. On top of that, more health is more health which is a great thing to have so that's why this manual of bodily health actually is one of the two skill books that are on our list but actually is the one that just gets edged out from the top five here at number six at number five we have the cloak of invisibility and yes i do realize that this is a cloak of protection over here not the cloak of invisibility the cloak of invisibility is invisible and it doesn't appear in the dmg so we have to use something to represent it of course as far as a lot of the other items here in the top five it could barely be a toss-up but this item just edges into the top five because it gives you basically as what is 
is essentially advantage on every attack as an artificer in every combat encounter. And you can actually utilize the Cloak of Invisibility for two hours, regaining one hour of use after every 12 hours of disuse, which in all honesty, it's gonna be very rare to use all two hours unless you're trying to infiltrate some enemy compound and you need to be invisible in plain sight of some sort. But having that ability to be invisible, not invisibility the spell, mind you, invisibility the condition, meaning that even after you attack, you're still invisible. So you're still getting advantage on a lot of those attacks, regardless of what happens. So this is a huge boon that you're gonna get here. It just, in my mind, it just edges out the manual bodily health just because of the fact that you're gonna be so much more powerful with that invisibility. And that's why it comes in and edges into the top five. At number four, we have the ring of three wishes. Now, honestly, this item could be number one. It gives you the access to three uses of the spell wish, which is absolutely insane. And the fact is that player's handbook does give you suggestions of how to use this particular casting of wish, whether it be casting a spell of eighth level or lower, a creating a magic item of 25,000 gold pieces, giving resistance to one type of damage up to 10 creatures. On the flip side though, it could be used for a number of unimaginable things that you and your DM are only limited by your own imaginations to come up with. Now, there are often though consequences for those wishes in those actions and because of that this volatility drops it down a few spaces on my list you can feel free to disagree with me make sure you put those comments down in the comment section below tell me why i'm wrong or tell me why you're right and i'll take a look at it but that volatility for me is the main reason why it comes in at number four it's time for the top three the three best magic items for your artificer and just cracking into the top three just in front of that ring of three wishes is actually our iron stone of mastery here at number three now, this particular Iron Stone is a very interesting one because it gives a permanent plus one, or at least while you're using it, to your proficiency score, which means the benefits are endless. You have plus one to your attack rolls, plus ones to your proficient saving throws and skills. They're all benefiting from this awesome item and it can be the difference at all levels of play, especially even at those higher levels so you can kind of keep pace with those high CR creatures. And with the Artificer having proficiency in constitution saving throws, we also gain the ability to continue to maintain that concentration on a number of spells that we we need to keep concentration on given the amount of spells that require concentration. Is concentration important? I think it is. So as a result, it does protect us from one of the most common saves of the game as well because constitution saving throws are also one of the more common ones. And as a result, this can be a really huge boon for your artificer or any player character for that matter. And that's why it comes in at number three, just edging out that ring of three wishes. Just edged out for the top spot at number two, we have the all purpose tool from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Thing. There are three versions of this particular item, but we're mainly talking about the plus three version. And what we're gonna get is a plus three to our spell save DCs and our spell attack rolls. Now, that doesn't seem like much when we think about some of the other ones. I mean, it is a plus three, so that's a huge boon. But then on the flip side of it, we're also getting access to any tool basically in the entire game by using an action to make that all purpose tool become smith tools or cobbler's tools or whatever we need it to be. On the flip side, at every dawn, we also have the ability to gain one cantrip from any class list and and be able to cast it as an artificer cantrip for the entire day. Yes, you heard that right. You can cast any cantrip with this particular item every day, as many times as you want. So you wanna be a Eldritch Blasting Artificer? You can do that with this item. If you want to have Shocking Grasp, or if you want to insult everybody with Vicious Mockery, you have the ability to do that with this item. And that is the main reason. This flexibility is incredible for any character class. And the fact that you can basically swap out your cantrips at will is amazing and as a result that is why it is here at number two but that just means we have one more to go and this is a hugely beneficial item i wonder what could edge this out all right the moment you've been waiting for at number one not the natural one on the dice but at number one we have the tome of clear thought the tome of clear thought actually gives us a plus two bonus to our intelligence score not unlike the manual of bodily health and it does require the 48 hours to read it in order to gain that boon but in addition to that you're also getting that plus two bonus to your maximum score and it may not seem like much but an extra plus one modifier to your intelligence score means that we're gonna have a better spell save dc we're gonna have a better to hit bonus with our spell attacks our battlesmiths are gonna be able to hit it even more because that is also their attack modifier for their weapon attacks in addition to their damage output because of this it's very important just for those hard skills that we're normally thinking about in combat but then not only that we also have these skills being benefited here that are very commonly used by artificers arcana investigation all of those majorly important in addition a lot of 
in my opinion, a lot of tool proficiencies can use the intelligence score as their main point of focus. And as a result, that means your artificer is going to be even better and will even be even better at tinkering and dabbling with things of the arcane. And as a result, that is why the Tome of Clear Thought comes in at number one. Now, you might think I am wrong and that is a-okay. Let me know that I am wrong down in the comment section and tell me why you think I'm wrong. So that way I can be enlightened just as much as I hope you all were while you were watching this video. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to wrap up our video on the best magic items for the Artificer. If you found any of this helpful, or if you made it to the end, make sure you smash that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you get notified when more of these top 10 videos come out, as well as our Dungeon Master Guides for various campaigns, as well as our live stream game that airs on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitch. Links for all those is down in that description below. In addition, consider joining our Patreon community. Be like Dave Platinum Dice, Sleepy Sorceress, and Cepus, and getting some of those awesome perks that we have over there, including Dungeon Master tips, newsletters, as well as monthly games and merch and much, much more. Link for that is going to be down in the description below, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash blue collar DM. I hope you all learned something. And I hope you found some really cool magic items that you can actually utilize with your artificers in your games. And as always, happy gaming.